Hello, my friends. This month, I'm excited to introduce to you someone who's inspired me, Debbie, Debbie Williams. She is a seasoned storyteller and started her podcast during COVID times on a way to share her own legacy. I was very intrigued by her reason to start podcasting, and I wanted to understand more and why is it really useful to share our own legacy. I'm glad you joined in. Remember to share your reflections in the comments while you're listening to this podcast. Let's dive in. Hey, Debbie, how are you? I'm very well. Thank you for inviting me on your podcast. Thank you for coming. So I have been, um, we've been talking a lot. You've been my inspiration on podcasting. And I wanted you today on the podcast, not for podcasting alone, but your journey towards it. So I want to get started and introduce yourself. How do you introduce yourself to your journey of podcasting? Gosh, you know, I started podcasting in 2020 during lockdown, having, I suppose, given myself excuses not to start it. I finally started. And I think the reasons why I wanted to start it, I have a lifelong philosophy that everyone has a story that somebody else wants to or needs to hear. And in addition to that, I wanted to leave a legacy behind for my family as well. So when my great-grandchildren or the great-great-great-grandchildren say, well, what did you do during lockdown? What was your reaction to it? What was your life like? Um, Not just during lockdown, but during the time when you were growing up and as an adult. So it's about leaving that legacy behind because if we go back to our ancestors and their storytelling, that's how they... That is how they share history, through storytelling. That is how important it is. And I just think that that legacy of storytelling is so important to how we understand life. And I wanted to um, recreate that in my own way. So why podcasting? So public public media? I think it's it's a medium that I enjoy. I've, I've always enjoyed listening to podcasts and it's one way of making it open to a lot more people. Not everyone reads. If you're dyslexic, for example, um, then you may enjoy listening to a podcast as opposed to reading it, for example. And, and I just think that, you know, finding a medium that is enjoyable, that um, people can hear your voice. Wouldn't it be nice to know what the, what the voice of your grandmother was or if you know your is as if you, if you don't know your grandmother for example I didn't know mine but to know the voices of some of your ancestors your family members what do they sound like how how do they pronounce their words and how do they pronounce the names and how we speak is something that is almost part of our identity as well isn't it I, I mean, definitely, I would have loved to hear my grandparents as voices as well, because, you know, I lost them at a very early age. And this is why I was very interested, because you said legacy, and I never really thought about it. And I'm just wondering, why would that, you know, I was wondering, why would that be important today to have that? Why in today's day and age would that be so important? Can you share more about about legacy itself? I think for me personally, legacy is something that is close to my heart. My father passed away in 2017, and prior to him passing away, he'd always ask him, you know, Dad, can you tell me a bit more about my family, my family history? And he never wanted to share. His excuse was, don't go for a headache, just leave me alone. Um, but that would be the continued excuse. I mean, luckily, my mum knew a lot about his family anyway, so I was able to get information from my mum. But being able to hear those stories from my dad about family members that I may not have known about, you know, it would have been nicer to hear it from him as opposed to me trying to find it out for myself afterwards. So I, I think a year after his passing, took a DNA test, spat in a bottle, sent it off, (laughs) waited rather impatiently 
for the results because in my head I wanted to know, you know, which part of African royalty am I from? So African royalty, huh? Yeah, I, I, I decided to create my own narrative. So when I got the results back, mm-hmm. I was like, okay, this is eye-opening but not surprising because it, it covered three different continents. Um, which are? Which are Africa, Eastern Europe, and Southern Europe. Mm, okay. And not surprised in any way because of the little information I managed to squeeze out of my dad. But I think there's. I wanted to. I wanted to know how far back I could go, because I know that my family history, though my parents are from Jamaica, it my the, the, my history doesn't start there. It starts way back. Be, be, you know beyond. Slave, but beyond the slave trade, beyond everything else that happened during that time, and I wanted to see how far back I could go, and that's why for me, legacy has always been interesting and, and has always been important. But whatever glories that my ancestors have, it belongs to them. It's their stories. It's just nice to learn a bit more about it, but also it's, it has you thinking as well about. What are you leaving behind? You know, what is it? What stamp are you leaving on the world? What is it that you want your legacy to be on this world? And it doesn't necessarily mean that we're going to be famous superstars. It could be those simple things that we do in our lives that has a, that has a positive impact on others. And I think that's really important as well. And I think by sharing stories on the podcast, by helping others share their stories as well, it's allowing everyone to have that voice, be able to share their stories and be able to share their legacy. And a, a podcast is a way that, you know, 10 years from now, 20 years from now, 30 years from now, someone wants to know, well, what are the sort of things that Debbie spoke about during a podcast? What, what are the guests speaking about? What are some of the obstacles and challenges that they overcame what how did they challenge people's Mm -hmm. thinking why was there a need to challenge people's thinking and i think it just leaves that little footprint behind for others so when initially from my understanding you started your podcast with just your stories right that's correct yeah Uh, you did your dna testing i know for maybe the audience is going to hear there was a bit of a cutoff but I want to go back to one point when you said your father wasn't really talking about it, but your mom knew. And that's very different perspectives on your, on your view of your past. And then with the DNA testing, how did it all tie in? Because you didn't get your dad's perspective. How did it support you in finding out your legacy because of one, a, a different narrative other than the personal narrative, if you know what I mean? Yeah, I think when you're researching your family history, doing a, doing a DNA, DNA test is only one part of it. There's, And you can't get a full background just by doing a DNA test. You have to do lots of additional background traces as well, looking through family records or historical records talking to friends and family as well to get, you know, to get that history, that historical background. There's um, a genealogist that I interview on my podcast, Paul Crooks. Um, I went to a couple of his seminars about tracing family history and that helped to put things into perspective. When, during one of his um, seminars, he said that it took him 13 years to trace back the actual village that his family came from in Africa. I remember at the time thinking, nah, I'm not going to take 13 years. I'm just going to buy his book and it's going to take me less than half the time. And I realised that that's not always the case. You, you know, you'll, you'll start researching your family history, you'll hit a brick wall, and then you'll, you'll park it for a bit and then something else will resurface. And then, like, you've got, the, you've got that, um, what's the word I'm looking for? you've got that impetus to continue and to really um, see what else you can find out. And then you hit another brick wall. 
and then it just that is literally the journey that I've that I've taken. But I think speaking to family who are still here, speaking mm-hmm. to my dad's brother in particular, who can help to fill those gaps, and cousins as well. As soon as you do a DNA test, if there's a match, suddenly you've got all these cousins that belong to you, and you're thinking, "Oh, okay." <laughs> Um, so that could be a surprise in itself was there ever a moment where you stood still and went oh my god and had like revelations or realizations of any sorts or surprises I think the the surprise is probably how I felt during parts of my family search my background is very mixed I, I mentioned Africa, Eastern Europe Southern Europe, and at times, from a cultural perspective, you might feel a bit lost. I, I know at one stage I felt lost, and I was like, "How oh, am I feeling about this?" Yeah. Because I don't know. I think, like for example, I went to a chemist and um, really lovely guy, and he's like, "Oh, so your parents from the Caribbean?" And I was like, mm, "Well, actually, I did my DNA test, and this, <laughs> this is actually where 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 my background's from." And, um, and then it's funny because I, I um, the next time I spoke to him, he goes, you know what, because of you, I did my DNA test as well. And I thought I was 100% Ghanaian and now I've got Portuguese in me. And I was like, I, I said, well, gosh, have you told your family that yet? <laughs> really? Wow. So, um, so I think it's, I think sometimes when you dig and you, you, you have one view or perception of yourself and you realize what actually it's much bigger than I had it ever imagined. And I think that's where sometimes you can feel lost in the process. But then you find yourself and thinking, well, no, I am who I am. You know what I mean? That, that original identification hasn't changed, but it's just that there are, lots, there are some additional elements to that as well. So how did podcasting, um, interviewing guests help you? Being curious. One thing that you have to do, especially if you're tracing your family history and you want to leave a legacy, you have to be curious. You have to be curious in terms of wanting to find out more. When it comes to podcasting, particularly when you have guests, you have to be curious about your guests and curious about their stories. One thing that it's allowed me to do is to really hone in on that active listening really listening to guests, really listening to their stories and allowing their stories to actually impact me and the world. Was there any one podcast or one guest in particular that really impacted you most strikingly? Because we always say every podcast or every interview will always affect us, but there must be that one that just was like, oh, that one. There was... There was one in particular, Joseph Bennett, mm-hmm. where we talked about living in trust, like really just allowing that process, not worrying, and to really live in faith and really live in trust. And I, th- I think that impacted me particularly because it was a message that I needed to hear at that given time. What was the message, if you don't mind me asking? The message was to live in trust. It's to really trust in the process. And to trust that everything will be okay. And I think that's the message that I needed to hear at that given time. And I thought, okay, this is what I'm going to do. You know, my New Year's resolution is, is, is going to be exactly that. Mm-hmm. Almost coming up to, to the whole year of, 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 me, of me doing this. And I need to get back in touch with Joseph to say, guess what? <laughs> and maybe continue that discussion But I think what's been really special is that everyone I've spoken to, there's a message not only for the audience, but there's also been a personal takeaway message for myself as well. Mm -hmm. And, And I think that it's about not only allowing your light to shine, but allowing others' lights to shine as well. And just giving respect to the to, to, to the stories that I shared. You got me thinking by that just now when you were sharing about that. Um, I wanted to ask you. I hope I'm in line, and I do phrase this 
right or right or you know in a kindful way but given that there's a lot of colonial healing that's now currently undergoing because you see very much a lot of polarized um conflicting emotionally sensitive environments all of that how can legacy support finding your legacy or sharing your legacy support healing traumatic roots how has that helped you for, for example with the podcasting you know what what's really helped is that is understanding that history is always in the in the eye of the victim and sometimes we need to dig deep into the whole story rather than his story which is history and there are always two sides to every story there's always more than one perspective and i understand that you know as i was growing up i only ever heard one side of history and i think that when talking about legacy when talking about storytelling it's about you know what i just don't need to hear one side and it, you know how far can i dig deep to actually find my story and to find my legacy and, and I think that's where the healing comes in, is actually to actually dig deep and find your story, really find where your history, where your personal history fits in. And I just think that where, when it comes to colonial healing, I think that's a long process because not everyone wants to admit their role in that colonial society that took place many years ago and for some people I, I just say sorry and we can call it a day I just think that and, and it, it, it happens in in lots of societies where the ruling the ruling culture of the society wants to downplay everyone else's and how do you heal from that I think everyone needs to share their story, you know, and. Um, so how does retelling your leg, how does sharing your legacy then heal the story is what I'm asking. How could they do that? What would be the ingredients for it? The ingredients is accepting the truth. The truth may not be pretty. And the truth also be relative, isn't it? Depending yeah. on, like you said, who, who is from whose lenses that's being shared. Exactly, exactly. You know, I mean, like, I did my DNA test thinking, yeah, I'm going to be exposed as some African royal princess. You know, the truth of the matter is, is that my pro my family are probably farmers, you know what I mean, of doing an amazing job of keeping their family alive, you know, but um, and I 100% and I really appreciate that. And I think being able to live in a knowledge that maybe isn't glamorous, but is still highly relevant, you know, and and um, and really having the opportunity to actually trace back your family as far as you could possibly go. And being able to reshare the story with your families so that they have a fuller picture of their identity and knowing where they're coming from. You know, Marcus Garvey, you need to know where you're coming from to actually know where you're going. And, and I think that for me, almost bringing back that culture of storytelling, being able to share history through stories, because that then it has more relevance, it has more meaning rather than me throwing you a fat in the figure. So how has you discovering your family history, sharing it in your legacy, finding out, and also sharing your stories, your legacy, has that also reshaped the way you communicate with different relationships? For me, the family history tracing is ongoing. I, I haven't come to a full stop there. 
you know, you you find out something, you pause. You find out something, you pause. I think doing the podcast has really helped with open communication, not just with family members, but with people in general. Being able to actively listen to people when they speak, which is really important because someone may say something you think, and you're thinking, um, actually, that's a really interesting story. Um, I'm going to use an example. I went on a bike ride with my friend, Harish, and he shared with me that he'd written his autobiography, only to be because he wanted to leave something behind for his children. And would I like to read it? And I was like, oh, my gosh, of course I would. The most amazing story ever. And I said, Harry, this is absolutely amazing. You need to really publish this book. It's an amazing story. Can I interview you on, on my podcast um, so you can share your, share, your, share your story about writing your autobiography? Because it's really, really amazing. And he didn't actually realize the value of what he had written. And then doing the podcast and then everyone else realizing the value of, 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 of his story. And, and I think that's the key thing it is realizing the, the value of each individual story. We all have a story for one year that we were born and we don't always realize that our ordinary lives are extraordinary to someone else. And what if some people just don't want to share it? They they wouldn't mind writing their legacy or sharing their legacy. But what if, you know, people don't feel like there's, it's not that their story is not worth telling because, you know, everybody has a story, but not making it so public because of all the, um, the fears that come with that by being so public about it. It's down to individuals. Some individuals will be happy to, share their stories, others want to keep it private. That's absolutely fine. But I think for those people who, who are happy to share their story, they're happy to literally have that realisation that, wow, my story really is interesting to someone else. Oh, my gosh, yes, it is. So that gives me a question I've been wanting to ask. How do you, how can we support the audience to what could they do to start writing their, or writing or publishing or sharing? What are the, you know, I go back to the word ingredients, but what can make a legacy so meaningful? What would make that meaningful? What could they start documenting in one way or form that you'd say, this is how you can, you know, um, start creating it or putting it away just so that you eventually you can bring it together. What would you recommend? If you're not too sure where to start for yourself, find an elder person, someone that's older than you, and ask them about their story. Because we never document what our parents went through or an uncle or an aunt. Just talk to them about their story, and that will help you think about your own story. How do you help them also that, you know, I'm I'm thinking about that because I only recently found out more. So my parents, my father's first generation immigrant because he, his parents became refugees and there was this complete silence. So when you were sharing the story of your father, I kind of relate to it because there's this silence around this whole traumatic experience. And there's a lot of, Shame for no re- for me, it's no reason, but trying to get that information from them, from your elders, and having to overcome or give them the safety to process that shame, as it were. How did, did you ever face that? Did you ever have to, um, how did you ever overcome that? How did that help you? You know what? I just think that people are, close to sharing their stories for a variety of different reasons maybe they've had a bad experience that they just want to forget mm-hmm. and it's about it's about being respectful to those feelings and I think sometimes when you hear someone else share their story 
it allows you to free yourself. And you're thinking, well, actually, my story is a lot simpler than that. And we don't always need elaborate fairy tale or action movie type stories to share with others. It's the simple stories that are so interesting. And those are the ones that makes a difference to a lot of people when you share those everyday simple stories. So going back now, so thinking about all this, you're doing this wonderful podcast. Um, I will share it with the audience in the link so that they could follow as well. What is the one thing you would like to share that they could become friends with their legacy to help them take the first step? What do you, what could you share with everyone? I think, you know, everyone's got a story from one year that you were born and maybe just simply just writing a paragraph, say, you know, what was your childhood like? What was the one thing, even thinking about one event, like I remember the 1977 Queen Jubilee party, for example, and you can write a story about that. You know, just that one simple event. It could be anything from doing a shopping trip with your parents, going to buy one particular thing or getting your ears pierced for the first time. And when I say, when I say like really simple stories, because those stories, when you share them, it, re- it reveals something. It, it reveals a little part of history. So, and that's why I said you don't, have to overthink and that's the thing people people overthink when they're sharing their stories but does it have to be something really big does it have to be something really elaborate the answer is no it just has to be truthful and i just think stick with your truthful story share your story with the integrity that it deserves it doesn't have to be elaborate you don't need to um add any bits of salt and pepper and honey to the story just 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 tell us this, this story as it is and you'll be amazed at what you unearth and what you uncover even from saying you know i lived on the boat at a certain age and this is what i experienced you know because not, not everyone not everyone has had that experience and to you know to, to someone else it's like oh my gosh i lived on the boat and you are what age oh my gosh that's really out of this world and not actually thought about that so I would say keep the story simple your experience will be extraordinary for someone else to hear and every story every person is relevant everyone has a light in them which if you allow yourself that light will shine for others to inspire others to share their stories as well and that is how we leave our legacies behind Thank you, Debbie. I'm going to leave it here because I feel you've given a lot of nuggets towards the end and I want them to just remain with that reflection. Debbie, thank you for coming online today. Thanks for sharing. Thank you. I hope you enjoyed our conversation on legacy as much as I did. Remember, I welcome your reflections. Do share because the more you share, the more it invites a different conversation. And don't forget, most of all, if this conversation can help someone out there, do share it with them. We never know what one conversation can do for someone else. And I hope that they can support them along their journey and yours. And that's a wrap.